Are you thinking about self-publishing a book but not really sure what you can do to start out with? Or have you been self-publishing books and you seem to be stuck in a rut? Well, in today's interview, I'm really excited to share somebody who has an enthusiasm and energy that you're going to find is completely infectious. And you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned. This is Self Publishing with Dale, where you learn to publish books that sell and build an unstoppable author brand. This past year, I had the fortune of traveling all over the United States for various conferences, and I ran into a guy twice. And I found his energy and enthusiasm so infectious. Uh, he just seemed to have a zest for life, and he is really just quite a guy. I, I think you're going to probably agree with me, but uh, just kind of not to get too far ahead of myself, the man's name's Jeff Eatley, and Jeff is actually a professional videographer and photographer. He has a very unique idea and some inspiration on what he wants to do in self-publishing a book, and it involves a little bit of his own life, but it's not that he just wants to settle for just simply publishing an ebook. No, he's not gonna settle for just doing a print book or an audiobook or a video, or photos. He has a grand vision, and wait until you hear exactly what he has planned. It is really thinking about the bigger picture, and the mission that he's going to serve is truly something of, man, deep passion and love, and I think you're gonna agree with me, so without any further ado, let's get on over into this interview. Welcoming to the show, good friend of mine, Jeff Eatley. How you feeling, man? I am feeling great. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Um, kind of slacking off on the YouTube a little bit. Had to back off just a second, step back, and now I'm charged up, ready to go again. Yeah, this is actually, you and I are kind of, we, we met through our shared interest of video content creation. What, what we originally crossed paths at Video Marketing World, but it wasn't until Vid Summit that we shared uh, Denny's, we had our moment together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a little meal. Um, I'm still suffering from it a little bit on the insides. No, not really. Uh, it, was, it was fine. Uh, we had good company. We had a good little crowd with us. Um, it was a fantastic night. And just to be out in LA with all you guys was incredible. Yeah, it was it was nuts. I tell you, there there probably would be some people that were watching this video who would have loved to have been a fly on the wall because I mean, it it was a veritable who's who sitting at that table. Uh, Except for the fact that I'm nobody and I just started this six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're crushing it though. I mean, you've you've done a channel. Share just a little bit about what your YouTube channel is about. Um, it basically started off as that I knew I wanted to create something and being a photographer for ten years, I knew I wanted to do more. And I, I've gotten into through the PPA, which is Professional Photographers of America. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to um, teach some classes and work with people like that. So I wanted to do something bigger. And I got with a friend of mine that does video. We started dabbling. He does it professionally. And I started learning. And it's another fashion of creating. And I love mm -hmm. creating. Creating is everything to me. So, you know, then all of a sudden it was like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. So I had a channel called autofocus started off with, and it was basically about photography and cars because autofocus. And I thought it was a good catchy thing. And I got it out there a little bit for about a month. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just throwing videos up, throwing everything at the wall. And I got to talking to people and they were like, Jeff, if you're going to do this and you're going to turn this into something you want to create bigger autofocus is a fantastic name to keep underneath you, but you need to put your name out there. And it got me thinking and it got me freaked out a little bit and it got me stressed because I took autofocus from, I think my YouTube channel had 17 or 27 subscribers over like four years because I posted some silly stuff. And I took that and I turned it into 220 in a month and a half. And I was like, am I really gonna start all of, yes. So I just, I, I said, you know what? Everybody hit the brakes. I hit the brakes and on July 1st, I released Jeffrey Eaton. And I think I'm somewhere around 440. and. I've had some ups and downs. I'm going through a lot of things. And if you watch my channel, because what it has evolved to in the last four months as, is bigger than photography. It's it's cameras. It's my life with cameras. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. It's everything I've learned, taught, and it's everything I want to give back to the community. And all the great people I've met that need to learn this little thing. and Or, or like YouTubers you meet and they don't know which camera to buy or how to use a camera. I want to teach those little things to make you better because you and your cell phone which there you go, throw that little let's clap. But uh, 
if you got your cell phone, you can make this happen and I can show you these little tiny things and I've learned how to do them myself. So it's proof. I mean, people are asking me, what camera are you using for video? And I'm like, oh, that's cell phone. That, that video is my cell phone. And they don't believe me. And, it, it, you know, a gimbal, a cell phone, let's go to town. I, it's not about how much money you spend or how much all this other stuff. It's how much effort you put into it and how much you want to work for it. And luckily, I'm very good with 10 years experience with Adobe Suites. Mm -hmm. So Premiere kind of fell naturally into that process and made it very easy for me to transition from Photoshop to Premiere and into InDesign and into all these other things I've done. And it, it kind of, it's just another creative outlet. And it, it just gives me an opportunity to go bigger and wider and help more people. Yeah, this is why I wanted to bring you on because I, I've been watching you grow over on YouTube and some of the message that you're sharing, I think can resonate with my audience because a lot of people, unfortunately, in the self-publishing community believe that they have to go buck wild, that they have to put out this 100,000 word epic manuscript. And some people aren't aware that there is still the digital media, the print digital media, if you will, that, that we still can tap into. So I was hoping that I can ask a few questions that you can kind of help clear up. But before we do jump into that, um, tell me about yourself. Like what got you into photography? Like what drew you into this world? Man, born, raised Southern Louisiana. Um, my parents are actually from New Jersey and um, New York City, which is crazy. Uh, they moved around quite a bit. My dad was in the military and we moved down to Louisiana and that's when I was born, um, nine months after we moved here. So I don't wanna know what they were doing along the way, but <laughs> apparently that's how I was created. So get down here and my whole life, it's always been about drawing. I started with pencil and I started with chalk and then in middle school we had art classes so I did all of that in the summer I would take art classes at UL or University of Louisiana and you know it just kept compounding and then we got to high school and I did a little bit of commercial arts and we did six weeks of photography in commercial arts and me and the teacher that was like one of the main teachers in my life that has really affected me and I got to see a studio and stuff like that and then it got me to meet photographers and I went on radio broadcast and I went learn from DJs how to do that kind of stuff. I was just anything you could create. I was like, ah, give me some of that. I want some of that. I want to eat it up. So I, I got excited and then I joined the Navy, which turned out to be probably one of the craziest mistakes of my life, but it got me here. So <laughs> even mistakes are good, <laughs> but I was a photojournalist in the Navy. Um, I went to school in Fort G. Meade, Maryland, which is uh, right outside, right between DC and Baltimore and learned photojournalism and learned how to write a little bit um, I still don't know what an adjective and a pronoun is. I, you know, they're like, where's the comma go? I'm Wherever I put it, that's where the comma goes. Um, I, but my teachers used to laugh so much because I would write and it would come out okay and say hi to my cat. And <laughs> it would come out fine and I would get okay grades in writing. But when they said break down this sentence and tell me, I was like, I don't know. I, I really don't know. So, you know, that happened and then life took over. I became 20. Uh, got out of the Navy. I was only in the Navy for a short period of time. Um, that didn't work out. I became a truck driver. And then uh, that was seven years traveling the country with no cameras. And that's when I first bought a little point and shoot. And, uh, and I'd gotten away from film into digital. And then um, I became a casino employee and I became the poker room manager. And because while I was driving trucks, I was gambling all the time. And uh, so I became that and then I made good money. And when I made good money, 2009, I bought a Nikon D90, uh, which is, I tell you what, you can get them for two, 300 bucks. Still a good camera today. It's a 10 megapixel. If you want to learn how to do photography and you want all the greatest buttons in the world, because the buttons are what help you go faster and create more, it's because it's the accessibility of the buttons on a camera. And I think that's a big difference between pro cameras and, and lower cameras is what you have access to immediately without going into menus. But we'll get into that later. But, uh, got that camera and the very first we bought it at nine o'clock at night 5 a.m we were up at a lake by my house and we were shooting on a tripod and i made this image and i still talk about it today it's called blue morning um we got there and realized that the sun doesn't set on the other side of the lake it sets behind i mean it comes up behind us so it was ruined i was like oh what am i gonna do so the moon was setting on this side and we had a reflection of the moon in the lake and it's, it's still one of my favorite pictures to this day and I took that the very first day I ever owned a digital SLR. So that right there was like, I got something. I don't know what I have. And then I have my father that 
yeah, it's been up and down my whole life. We've had bad times, good times, all this crazy stuff. And then come to find out when I started doing photography, he's like, you need to do this. You need to take your creative, whatever's going on in this crazy head and of 16 voices going on. You need to run with it. You need to apply it. You need to find it a home in your life. And I have, and it's taken me 10 years and I have chased, I've shot weddings and I've shot, you know, massive events and I've shot small events and I've shot famous people and, and I've done a bunch of crazy stuff, been in magazines, multiple magazines and all this other stuff. And it doesn't matter. I don't do weddings. Don't ever ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thing I won't do. Uh, but I'll shoot pretty much anything. And uh, as a commercial artist, because that first photographer I knew and that commercial artist, he's a commercial artist. You have to pretty much be very well rounded mm -hmm. because you might get called today to shoot, you know, this mouse for Apple and they want to pay you a fortune to make a beautiful image of a mouse or tomorrow you might be shooting a family or the next day you might be shooting a car. You never know in commercial because you don't know what products. So that adventure has just led to me starting to say, well, I wonder what's next. I wonder what's next. I wonder what's next. And then that immediately carried into my YouTube channel, which was incredible. And then it's the life of cameras what's next. So that's kind of, it just fell in. And I, I was talking to Brian G and all these other guys. And, and I, I, when I get into something, I completely just drown myself in it. And um, I've learned to take my breaks when I have to yeah. mentally, but you just submerge yourself in it and let it just, if it eats at you a little bit and it makes you a little bit mad, that's good. It's passion. It's, it's fire. If, if it, if it, if it affects you in a negative, negative way, that's fine. You know, you might want to slow down, but if it's just getting you excited and getting you like, mm, I got to get this done. I'm waking up right now. Like this morning I posted on social media, you know, it's Monday morning. Why don't you love this day? Because Monday morning is your opportunity for the week to do something you've never done before and create something you've never done before. And it's, I don't see it's any different than writing or making music or any of those things you just submerge yourself and love it and then you never know i mean what's next oh, oh. You, you blow your own mind because i blow my mind some days I, I i stop for five minutes and i'm just like how did i get here <laughs> hopefully everybody's starting to, to kind of sense why i wanted to get you on for an interview just uh being able to spend some time with you in the limited time that we did i was like and I, of course i've been on uh, a couple of your lives before i just have you know some of the stuff that you communicate it just resonates with me and hopefully people are starting to kind of draw the parallels between what you're sharing and what they can be able to do as indie authors and self-publishers so um rather than kind of going through a lot of like the formulaic, you know, what kind of equipment should we use? Who should we seek? Let's just skip right to something that I find most intriguing. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on was to talk about this passion project that you have going on. And it's not just something small, it's huge. It's really big. And it started out with an idea. So share a little bit with that. Okay, so born and raised, like I said, my father's in the military. Now, should I should I do the news now or at the end of this little two minute rant? Um, okay, I'll do it at the end. Okay. My father my father served in the U.S. Army and he joined up in 1967 and he volunteered and his father was military and my grandfather, you know, everybody in my family is military, and he signed up and he became a helicopter pilot and a warrant officer, and he served two tours of Vietnam. And he continued on in the reserves and, and the National Guard and all this over the next 43 years, including a tour of uh, Iraq in 2009 at the ripe old age of 60 years old or 62 years old. Um, he was one of the oldest guys there. He went run a flight line and served a year. Uh, he really believes in serving his country and serving and doing those things because it's just who he is. And it's and, and I honor him for it and I cherish him for it. And whether it has taken things from our family or given things, I think it has given us way more than it can ever take. Um, it, it has affected us in many crazy ways, yeah. um, especially my older siblings. My sister's 10 years, 11 years older than me. And, you know, he's had rough days and therefore it carries through. But what he decided is about a year ago, he made a random comment about, you know, I'd like to go back to Vietnam. And I'm like, 
you what? <laughs> you served two tours of Vietnam in the war. I, I don't know. So we got to talking about it and some things happened. And um, about four months ago, it came up and it got kind of hot and heavy. And we, um, my step grandmother is Vietnamese and she was trying, she's trying to help us out, get there and stuff like that because she's Vietnamese and she knows the way around and we're going to go back to Vietnam. Now, that being said, we have some plans. We've been to Washington, D.C. My father knows a lot of people on the wall up there, and uh, we've gotten names signed that he personally knew that died in the war. We also have some GPS coordinates to locations where they passed away at. We've also been to Arlington Cemetery where one of them's buried. Um, all of these things kind of tie into the story that we're going to tell while we're there. Uh, we're also going to travel back to bases that he went to where he knew helicopters were shot down, where he knew battles took place that he you know, fought in. Um, we're going to hit all of that. And plus, we're going to have a whole lot of fun. We're going to go to some bar tops on top of hotels. And we're going to what's great about Vietnam and all the research we're doing is, is we're going to go to some hotels and they're like five star amazing hotels for like eighty four dollars a night. So not bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cheap. I saw this one rooftop bar that I really, really want to go to. And I was looking at it and they were like, it said dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. So it was like high priced. So I, I looked up what a drink cost and a drink was like $7 for the best top shelf, best alcohol on the planet. And I'm like, I can't get that in Lafayette, Louisiana for seven bucks. So that's still cheap. And so every other bar you look at is one, you know, one dollar sign. Oh, this is the most fun bar in all of Saigon and it, it's like two dollar mixed drinks top shelf <laughs> I'm like wow. let's do this <laughs> we can <laughs> we can have some fun for a budget you know so and it's like want to rent a motorcycle for a week a hundred bucks for oh like a week oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it's it's dude, I, I don't even think it's that much it's like 22 dollars a day yeah. so I mean it's ridiculous some of the stuff is so cheap over there it's they say you can eat for like two bucks a day three bucks a day yeah but so we have a bunch of plans to have a lot of fun because a lot of it's going to be very, very, very emotional. And then it kind of got to the point where he shared in a military group we're in um, a bunch of guys that were Vietnam vets and stuff like that and other vets. And he shared in that group and he was like, well, you know, I'm going to go back to Vietnam. And this one man asked him and this was a really bad day for me. And then this was compounded on top of it. But um, I was having a rough day anyway. And then I see on Facebook that my dad tagged me and I didn't know why. And I clicked on it and in this conversation with about 50 people talking about going back to Vietnam, this one man said, I'm not going back. Are you like scared? And my dad put flat blank. He was like, I don't remember exact wording, but he was like, you know, I'm not, and my son's coming with me. So I'll be all right. And I'm like, Oh God, I'm already emotional today. It's already a bad day. And he did that. And I'm like standing in the middle of Walmart parking lot, like almost crying. So, <laughs> I mean, but, so it's going to be incredible. Now, here's the thing. We were supposed to be going in January. Um, we're going to have to push it back, yeah. but we are going. Um, it, without a doubt, it's not going to stop until we get there. Um, some things got kind of jumbled, and then March and May is the rainy season, so it's really not a good time to go mm -hmm. uh, until you get to late July, and then it's hotter than Hades. And um, he said he's already been there once as hell. He doesn't want to go back when it's hell. <laughs> Can't uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a cat on my head. So, but, um, so yeah, so we're going to try to situate it and try to get out there probably next October. I know it's a long time. Um, it but plenty I of think, time to plan though, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It's going to give us, it's going to give us really time to notch down on exactly what we want to do. It's going to give me yeah. time to get some more products and some more kind of, you know, equipment because really my equipment that I work with every day and I make, and I'm not trying to pump up my head, but I make pretty cool images. It's pretty old and it's starting to, and it's not video quality. I work with Nikon and don't do it guys. If you want video, stop, just go somewhere else. Um, I've been with Nikon for 10 years. I love them. If you want to learn photography and you want to be a photographer, Nikon's great. If you want to be in videography and you want to be able to do a little bit of everything, no, it's not. So that's just personal reference, just in case somebody wants to dabble in this. So, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's going to be an adventure and we're still going and there's no doubt about it. And uh, it's something he needs to do. It's something as 
you know, his biggest honor was to serve his country and my biggest honor would be to tell his story. So. Excellent. And see, that's where it's, where, this is a perfect transition. So you shared a little bit about what the journey is going to be. And so how do you plan on documenting the whole process? Whew. Um, we're, <laughs> we have some friends that are going to send in some mics, some, I'm pretty excited because he's letting me have some very expensive wireless mics that can record for like 12 hours a period. Nice. Which is amazing. Nice. So we can just record everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually has like sound activation. So it'll stop recording if there's just no sound. Um, and then it'll just pick back up and it, it does a bunch of fun stuff. But these are like some thousand dollar mics. But nice. he's going to hook us up with those. Uh, I'm going to try to get Sony equipment right now. Um, we have the A5100. We have the A6000. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to run. You, you got to remember, though, most of this is going to be done in backpacks um, because while we're traveling on motorcycles, that's all we'll be able to have is one backpack. Yeah. Um, so we're not carrying much. We're bringing a big backpack and then a small one as an extra, and that's it. So um, I'm trying to downsize to Sony and get that ton of equipment because it's so small. It's mm -hmm. half the size of half the size of my Nikon equipment. So that would be fantastic. Um, I'm probably going to be running with two to three lenses max. I'm going to run a little bit longer one and then two wides. And uh, so we'll run with those two cameras. We'll probably have one of my big bodies unless I'm able to upgrade. And with this gap, I'll probably have time to upgrade to a Sony A3. Nice. And, and then that will cover the gambit because the A3 backed up with these, like the A5100 be able to just do walk around shots and stuff like that. And the B roll and all that stuff. And we want to, we're going to, I mean, we're saving up money to put aside when we get to Vietnam to buy a cheap drone at one of their places. Oh, nice. And if we lose it, if we lose it in the jungle, fine. Um, <laughs> as long as we get the SD card out of it. Um, you know, we're going to find something and, and launch some drones over some areas and try to get some big footage. But mainly what it is, is there's like three stories that I want to document. Um, and, and this gets into whole, whole writing a book and stuff like that, because I'll step back for a second. Eighth grade, I started writing this thing called the Chicago Journals. Um, the teacher said we had to write a story, a short story, mm -hmm. and it had to be like 10 pages. And I, I started with the Chicago journals and it was just about a guy that, you know, went out and helped people and got caught in some really ridiculous situations. Well, over my high school career, every time they said we had to write something, it was just another Chicago journal. And it was just, you know, these guys, this guy ended up at like a haunted house. And I, I just write these crazy over the top, really weird stories. I wish I had them still, but, uh, I have this thing into me because writing is creating and I would love to write something. So this is where documenting this is going to be as easy as it is to document it, which is really hard, but it's going to be to write it and I'll be able to write it too. And I want to do it. If I, you know, if I sit down and write it, it's going to be written with pictures. So it'll be locations you're at as the backdrop. So this is going to be more of an, a magazine we were actually thinking about printing a magazine for and then being able to sell those for 20 bucks or 25 bucks or 30 yeah. bucks and then printing a nice book the coffee table style book that tells us the journey on top of the videos and then this that'll be his story and then i want to make a secondary book that's not going to be much writing except for the locations and stuff like that but that'll be more about just the incredible i mean vietnam did a incredibly beautiful story and an incredibly beautiful country. So, and there's so many, and you got mountains, big old mountains, you got rice paddies, you got all these different things and, and I'm going to get to see them. So my cat's really taking a bath right during this. <laughs> uh, I just noticed that. So, and then there's also the story about me as a photographer being there and what I do to create the images that I create to put in the books, to put in the magazines, to do all of this. And then there's the last story of just me and my dad. I mean, so there's his story, there's the photography story, and then there's our connection, connected story. So there's a lot. We were calculating out that off of three weeks of being there, we could probably make 100 videos at 10 minutes apiece. Whew, man, this, this is, a, and, and so, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I see so many areas of opportunity between video, print book, ebook, audio book, 
uh, potential behind the scenes bonus footage you can be able to, to send people. This is huge. Is there any other things I'm missing out of this project? I think the sad truth is, is we were talking to a couple of companies and there's a rental company that rents equipment and said, if you don't get it, we might take part in it. We want to keep talking to you over the next. And now that it's been expanded or pushed back, it's probably going to help. It was on a really tight crunch for them to really get involved in. But I think if this gives me another six months to build what I'm doing everywhere else and prove to myself, prove to them what I can do, um, then I think they'll come on board and they're going to basically loan me equipment for the trip nice. and we're going to do some uh my dad's absolutely he loves this part of it he wants to get on my channel doing this and starting to do reviews and talk i'm not doing reviews like most people do reviews i'm not going pixel peep or i'm not going break down you know i guess it would be as if you're a writer i wouldn't want i wouldn't want to be the guy that sat down and told you you know where your verbs were in the wrong place i would want to tell you the feel of it I would want to tell you the emotions it brings or the, the you know, the concepts and, and the imagination that I get from your words. How much can you push my imagination? Well, that's the same thing with photography. So we're going to do a lot. Whatever equipment we bring, we're going to review it. The backpacks we buy, the clothing we wear, we're going to review that stuff too. And we're going to make videos. So if it oh, really? if we buy some $20 pants and we like them, uh, we have a local clothing store that's actually interested in giving us a couple pieces of clothing. And I'm like, good. If they tear, we're going to tell the world your stuff tore. If it, if it holds up in Vietnam for three weeks, well, then therefore, thumbs up. Everybody buy this. That's amazing. So this is probably a good opportunity since it's going to be a little bit of time. How can some people actually get behind you and support you? Is there any way that people can do that? I do have a Kickstarter we started. Um, okay. Or actually... Nope, GoFundMe. Sorry, wrong page. Uh, I have the GoFundMe we GoFundMe started up. GoFundMe shutting down your site right now. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Look, I had a GoFundMe five seconds ago, and now I have nothing. So you can PayPal me, I guess. No, um, we're actually. I mean, now that I have a little more time, yes, we were kind of asking if anybody wanted to donate some money. It would really help me Wonderful. reach out. Um, but now I, I'd like to really team up with some people. I would like you know, whatever you're doing, let's see if we can get it involved in this. And maybe we can just share, like over the next six months, I'm gonna share more of my dad's stories. We're gonna talk about a lot more of it. We're gonna sit down like once every couple of weeks and we're gonna start telling stories and just showing what 50 years ago was like for him and what today is like going back and knowing this is coming. Cause it's gotta be, I mean, he doesn't have much hair left but it's probably knocking out a few more hairs, but you know, it's going to give us more time to do all this fun stuff like that and talk more and just get a feel for how it's all going to be and plan. And, and and if anybody wants to be a part of it in any way, shape or form, if there's this community right here, if there's a ghost writer out there, because I don't know where to put commas, uh, <laughs> that would like to be involved. Um, we're trying to get military magazines involved, like military.com. It's one of the biggest websites for military. Um, they share a lot of stuff. They've contacted me back and said, look, when you get something, let us know and we'll see if we can put it out on our channels and just get it out to the people. That's a massive help. I mean, you put me in front of a million people that go to their website. That's huge. I mean, it doesn't have to be monetary. It doesn't have to. If you got an hour or two of your life that you, you think you can help me learn something that will help me there. Let's do it. I mean, I'm, I'm all in. And then what's great is, is my life with cameras. It's gotten me here. If I wasn't so good with a camera, if I hadn't started creating photography, if I hadn't started to do all these things and building and learning and doing all this and busting my hump for 10 years, it never would have got me to Dallas. Because Nick Nimmons and, and Brian G. Johnson and um, Jeremy Vest from Dallas would never have invited me up there because I said, oh, I'm a new YouTuber and I have 84 subscribers. Yeah. It was because they saw my work. And what I had done. And they said, can you come up here and shoot here? And I'm like, oh my God, yes, I can. And I did. And we made these great images and we had a ball. And I met they were pretty a awesome, of actually. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty cool. And I mean, it was really a horrible 20 minute setup. This is what I got. This is all I got. Let's make the best images I can. But that's what I've always been about. And, and that's what I want my channel and people to realize that anywhere you're sitting, except for in front of a futon with a cat on top, you can make a good, I can make a good image in this room right now. I don't know how, 
but give me 10 minutes. And I mean, I don't believe in writer's block because when I do write, I can write a tablet full in hours. I can, when it goes, it goes. And I can turn that on and off. It's just, I don't have the time to do it. I'd love to write more. Yeah. I have about four different, by the way, I have about four different story or books in my, in my mind. And one is possibly a movie. Nice. Nice. See, we got to talk more, you and me. Well, man, we're starting to get towards uh, the little bit of a wrap up. Um, I know that prior to us getting connected here, I was like, hey, man, uh, do you have a website I can send people to? <laughs> you were like, what do you mean? I'm like, uh, you know, like your own website. <laughs> so I had pulled it down four months ago um, or three okay. months ago. I pulled it down because I wasn't happy with that service. And yeah. I got hooked up with a guy that let me do a beta version. Yeah. And it just recently came out in a couple a couple of weeks ago and then i just kind of forgot about it and i hadn't done all the things you need to do to get the thing live yeah so you made a comment and i made it happen yeah just like that massive freaking action so how can viewers get a hold of you man i am absolutely at me myself and i which is basically jeff eatly.com that's so super simple, man. Uh, I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day. And hopefully we can follow up with you as the uh, project starts to come closer uh, to completion and such. So maybe uh, uh, this time next year, we, we can probably see somewhat of a semi-finished project. So that'd be awesome. It would be awesome. We got to get a, We got to get together around July 4th. That sounds like a winner for me, man. That's Somewhere cool. around Independence Day. I think it would be a good time to do a big shout out about what we're doing next with this. I like that idea. Let's plan on doing that. Well, hey, Jeff, I really appreciate your time. And folks, listen, don't let the party in. While you're still here, you're going to want to go over and watch the next video and make sure that you drop a little bit of love. Share this with somebody else who would enjoy it too. And make sure that you give a big shout out to Jeff Eatley over at jeffeatley.com. In the meantime, in between times, it's been self-publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.